Hello YouTubers, this is Triple Seven Die Hard Forever, coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended model as I continue to play catch up. Today I'll be doing a review on the Gemini Jets United States Navy Boeing P-8 Poseidon military aircraft in a 1-200 scale model. I pre-ordered and purchased this model from Troy's Toys, whose store is based out of Olin Park, Kansas, here in the United States of America, and his website address is www.troystoysinc.com. But first, before I go into details about this sophisticated military aircraft, allow me to share some information about the history of the United States Navy and how they came about, if you would please. The United States Navy is the Naval Warfare Service branch of the United States Armed Forces and one of the eight Uniformed Services of the United States of America, along with the United States Army, the United States Marine Corps, the United States Air Force, the United States Space Force, the United States Coast Guard, the United States PHS, Public Health Service Commission Corps, and the NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Commission Officer Corps, which traces its actual origins to the Continental Navy which was first established during the American Revolutionary War and was formed by the Continental Congress on October 13, 1775 and became the Continental Navy's first establishment of what has become known today as the United States Navy. The United States Navy is currently the largest and the most capable Navy service branch in the world and in terms of tonnage of its active battle fleet alone. It is currently larger than the next 13 navies combined, which includes 11 of the allies and partner nations of the United States of America. It also has the highest combined battle fleet tonnage and the world's largest aircraft carrier fleet with 11 in service. The United States Navy is currently the third largest of the U.S. military service branches in terms of personnel as the United States Navy falls under the administration of the Department of the Navy within the United States Department of Defense, whereas the headquarters of the United States Navy is located at the Pentagon, which is located in the Washington, D.C. suburb of Arlington County, Virginia. As of July 2021, or at the time of this video review posting, the United States Navy has 209 deplorable combat vessels and more than 3,700 operational aircraft in which 117 of those are the Boeing P-8 Poseidon military aircraft type with no unfulfilled orders pending on this military aircraft type as the United States Navy is currently the third largest air force in the world after the United States Air Force and the United States Army respectively. And the Boeing customer code for the United States Navy concerning this particular military aircraft is AF. All right, everyone. Let's take a look at the front of the box here, where you see the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the Navy title, the Rondell logo, the United States Navy Rondell logo, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, the aircraft type, the 1200 scale diecast aircraft model, as well as the item number information you see at the front of the box. Now you're looking at the back of the box where you see the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the rest of the information, the social media page of Gemini Jets is Facebook, the Boeing official license product decal as well. You can pause and read that information if you like. In the meantime, I'm going to keep this moving, all right? Now you're looking at the top of the box where you see the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal as well as the warning information and the item number information you see at the top of the box. Now you're looking at the bottom of the box, which consists of a flap. You see the Gemini engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, as well as the website information of Gemini Jets. I'm going to show you the purpose of that flap in a minute. Now you're looking at the left side of the box, which contains the Gemini 200 engraved gold decal, the 1200 scale diecast model, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, the aircraft type, as well as the item number information on the left side of the box. Now you're looking at the right side of the box, the same information on the left side of the box I showed you earlier on, all right? All right, now you're looking at the front of the box, and the reason you're looking at the front of the box, I got laid down on the table, and the sole purpose with that is this flap here I showed you earlier, and I'm going to flip that over, and that's what you see there's the foam right there, including the, uh, the tripod stand that came with the model. 
I will not do a review with that model stand. There's an alternative model stand. I'm going to show you that in a moment. But in the meantime, I'm going to take this out and let you see the uh, aircraft model inside. Check it out. That is the actual aircraft model, okay? I'm going to take that out momentarily. Now I'm looking at this alternative model stand that, I, uh, that I'll be doing a review on. Uh, there's no padding on there, but it's okay. But it's better than that tripod stand that came with the model. So that's the one I'm going to be doing a review on, all right? All right, with all that information out of the way about the history of the United States Navy, plus all the details here on the front of the box, as well as the back of the box, plus the packaging, as well as the alternative model stand that I'll be doing the model review with, with no further ado, everyone, here is the actual model out of the packaging box. Check it out. There it is, everyone. The Gemini Jets, United States Navy, Boeing P-8 Poseidon military aircraft in a 1-200 scale model. All right, allow me to share some information about the United States Navy Boeing P-8 Poseidon military aircraft and how it came a part of their fleet, okay? The Boeing P-8 Poseidon aircraft is a military sophisticated maritime patrol aircraft that was actually developed and produced by Boeing Defense, Space, and Security that was modified from the next generation Boeing 737-800ERX as this particular military aircraft was developed exclusively for the United States Navy. The United States Navy actually began studying for a replacement military aircraft which would become the military aircraft that will ultimately replace their Asian Lockheed P-3 Orion turboprop ASW military aircraft that has been operating in service with the United States Navy since 1962 back in the 1980s. Then a second competition bid for a replacement began sometime in 2000 when Lockheed Martin submitted the Orion 21 which was an updated new built version of the P-3 then Boeing submitted their bid proposal that was based on its 737-800 jetliner aircraft and London-based Bay Systems offered a newer built version of their Nimrod MRA-4 which was actually a British jet powered maritime patrol aircraft. However, on May 14, 2004, after careful consideration and a series of evaluations from the United States Navy that actually studied from a military strategic standpoint as well as a political standpoint perspective, Boeing came out as the runaway winner as the United States Navy officially awarded the aircraft development contract to Boeing on June 15, 2004 to develop and produce their next military maritime maritime uh, patrol aircraft as it was officially assigned the destination name known as the P-8 Poseidon on March 30, 2005. The P-8 Poseidon's first test flight took place on April 25, 2009 and the first P-8 Poseidon military aircraft was delivered to the United States Navy on March 4, 2012 and its inaugural deployment began officially when six aircraft and 12 aircrew members of Squadron VP-16 departed its home station of Naval Air Station NAS Jacksonville in Jacksonville, Florida for Kadena Air Base in Okinawa, Japan on November 29, 2013 as the Boeing P-8 Poseidon military aircraft has become the maritime patrol aircraft that will ultimately replace the U.S. Navy's Asian Lockheed P-3 Orion sometime in the foreseeable future. So with that said, let's get down to the nitty gritty and let me show you all the details on this aircraft model, shall we? Let's check it out. All right, we're gonna start at the front of the aircraft here on the port side, left side, where you see the nose gears, the nose gear door, and you see the Peter tubes and static ports. And then you see that black radome nose cone, which is right here. I'm gonna give you a better view of it. Let's check it out. Well, this black radon nose cone right here is also known as the IFFI Identification Friend of Foe Interrogator Avionics System Radar. And the sole purpose of this particular radar is to enable air traffic controllers as well as air defenders to identify military and civilian aircraft as well as verifying forces as friendly and determine their bearing as well as their range for the detection, integration, identification, tracking, and data extraction of small targets in severe environments. That's the sole purpose of that black radon nose cone right there, okay? 
All right, we're still at the front of the aircraft here on the port side where you see the uh, cockpit windows and the windshield wipers. But right behind the uh, black radar nose cone right here is the uh, nose foreign area right there. And inside the nose foreign area is a special type of radar, which is called the AN-APY-10 Multi-Mission Surface Search Radar. As this particular radar is optimized specifically for maritime, little roll, and overland surveillance, which is able to provide radar images in high resolution, which will enable the P-8 Poseidon aircraft to identify warships as well as submarines from long range distances, okay? And then you see the uh, 428 right there is the, uh, right there underneath the cockpit windows and by the uh, Peter tubes right here, we have you right there. It's also displayed at the tail fin of the aircraft as well. 428. This is the actual serial number on this aircraft, but the actual registration ship number on this aircraft is 168428, as this was the seventh born P-8 Poseidon military maritime patrol aircraft that was actually produced and built by Boeing Defense, Space, and Security. And the first test flight on this aircraft took place on July 7, 2011, and was officially delivered to the United States Navy on March 4, 2012, as this particular military aircraft was the very first of its kind out of the 117 that the United States Navy had placed orders for back on June 15, 2004, that officially entered the aerial fleet of the United States Navy. As this number can also be seen on the tail fin of the aircraft you see there. All right. All right, now you're looking at the nose gear door and the honorary distinctive name that's actually displayed on the nose gear door on the port side you see here. The United States Navy decided to dedicate this particular P-8 Poseidon Maritime Patrol aircraft to the first individual by the name of Jessica D. Diaz, who is currently serving in the United States Navy as an AM-3-AW Naval Air Crewman and was promoted to the rank of Captain and was awarded Airplane Captain of the Year, who is from El Paso, Texas. However, the year that Officer Diaz was awarded this honorary distinction of Airplane Captain of the Year remains unknown. But at the time of this video review posting, Jessica D. Diaz is currently assigned to the Patrol Squadron VP-5 unit, as well as stationed at the Naval Air Station NAS Jacksonville, which is located in Jacksonville, Florida. All right. And then you see the front radome uh, sensor, which is right here. And this particular radon sensor is actually called the ESM, the Electronic Support Measure Sensor Digital Measurement Unit. And the sole purpose of this particular radon sensor unit that involves search, interception, identification, and the location of enemy radar as well as radio communications, which will allow it to jam up, intercept, as well as avoiding and disrupting the enemy's radio frequency signals that poses any type of electronical threats to the aircraft as well as the Navy vessels, all right? All right, now you're looking at the infrared camera sensor, which is this right here. And this particular infrared sensor is actually called the MAS, the Missile Approach Warning System Camera Sensor, which is used to detect attacking missiles as this infrared camera sensor also has a warning cue to alert the pilots to make a defensive maneuver and deploy the countermeasures available to disrupt missile tracking. And then you see the, uh, the, uh, the observing window right there. And this, this huge window is actually used to observe as well as detect any type of activity that takes place. And then you see the box-like looking antennas right up here, there, and there. These box-like looking antennas are actually called UHF, Ultra High Frequency Satellite Communications Antenna which are similar to the UFH ultra high frequency antennas that's displayed on the United States Air Force Boeing E-4B Nightwatch dash the doomsday plane, but a lot smaller, okay? And then you're looking at the infrared camera that's displayed on the underbelly of the aircraft, which will be right, right here. This particular infrared camera is actually called the MX-20HD High Definition Electro Optical Infrared Webcam which is used specifically for onboard image processing as well as microchrome daytime camera viewing as well as infrared nighttime camera viewing in all four directions. 
All right, now you're looking at these engines, and these are the CFMI-CFM56-7B27A turbofan type engines that are used on this particular United States Navy Boeing P-8 Poseidon Maritime Patrol aircraft. You also see the engine cones right there. Now I'm going to turn this aircraft model around. Let's see the turbofan blades. Let's check them out. All right, now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the uh, port side featuring the engine strikes right there. And the turbo fan blades, do they spin? Let's check it out. Yes, they do. Perfect. And you see the uh, inboard landing lights right there, as well as the front visual view of the landing bogey gears. It features the landing gear struts, as well as the landing gear doors. Now you're looking at the engines here on the starboard side, featuring the engine strikes right there. And the turbo fan blades spin over here as well. Yes, they do. Perfect. And then you see the inboard landing lights right there, as well as the front visual view of the landing bogey gears, including the landing gear struts, as well as the landing gear doors. Now you're looking at the front of the aircraft, you got a better visual view of the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, the black radon nose cone, the nose gear door, the landing gear lights inside of the nose gear door, the landing gear struts, as well as the front visual view of the landing gears as well. All right. All right, we're still on the engines here on the port side and that little hump on the engine column, which is this right here. That distinguished hump that's on the, on the engine column is actually called A180 KVA, electrical generator. And the sole purpose for this particular type of generator is that it allows this aircraft to react faster to airspeed commands. It's on the other engine as well. I'll show you that later on, as well as the landing bogey gears right there, displayed right there as well, okay? Now you're looking at the specialized wingtips on this aircraft. And these specialized wingtips are actually called the EMEDs, which stands for Electro Mechanical Expulsion De-Icing System Specialized Rake Wingtips. As these wingtips are actually similar to the ones that are being used on the Boeing 737-900ERs and the Boeing 767-400ERs. As these special customized wingtips can shake the ice off the airframe by vibrating an aluminum or stainless steel that uses leading edge technology with enough energy vibration to dislodge ice thicker than 0.15 centimeters, which is equivalent to about 0.06 inches, as the United States Navy actually selected this particular specialized customized de-icing rake wingtip over the blended winglet and the split scimitar winglet shortly after the United States Navy officially awarded the aircraft development contract for the Boeing P-8 Poseidon Maritime Patrol aircraft to Boeing on June 15, 2004. And then there's the red navigation light display on the edge of that uh, wingtip device there as well. Now looking at the back of the aircraft here on the port side and behind those antennas is the distinctive looking hump that's at the center of the underbelly of the aircraft which is this right about there. That distinctive looking hump is actually called the ESM Electronic Support Manager Scanner slash OBIGGS Onboard Inert Gas Generator System in which it produces nitrogen that pumps into the fuel tanks to keep the oxygen level in the fuel tanks very low, okay? And then you see the United States Rondale decal right there as well as the Navy billboard title and this is the official Rondale decal for the United States Navy and then you see the um, the rear radon sensor right here. This particular radon sensor is actually called a CDL, a Common Data Link Directional Antenna, which is actually a communications protocol sensor where signals are transmitted, received, synchronized, routed, and simulated, allowing a full duplex data exchange between aircrafts and submarines. And then you see the weapons bay door right about right there underneath the uh, Rondell right there. This particular door is stored up for five Mark 54 torpedoes and slash or six MK-82 depth charge long range missiles. And then you see this little uh, deal right there. It's, you can barely see it. That little deal there is the, uh, these are called Sonoboy launchers, rotary pressurized chutes. As Sonoboys are launched and released through the pressurized, through these pressurized chutes. That'll be right there, okay? All right, we're at the back of the aircraft and the antenna that sits on top of the tail fin, which is this right here. This particular antenna is actually called an MRSAT, which stands for International 
marine slash maritime satellite antenna and the sole purpose of this antenna is to provide marine vessels with reliable communications between crew members and passengers with the shore as, as well as operative interaction with other vessels and shore services. And then you see the horizontal stabilizer as well as the vertical stabilizer which is here and there. They, these are also installed with EMEDS, the electromechanical exposing the icing system, as well as which is able to dislodge the ice off the horizontal stabilizer, the tail fin, as well as the vertical stabilizer using electromechanical leading edge technology. Awesome. And then you see the LF code right there. This is the actual tail code that was assigned to the V-16 patrol squadron that was originally established as a reserve patrol squadron 906 which later became VP-906 sometime in May 1946 and was officially redesignated as VP on February 4, 1953. The VP-16 squadron is an active patrol squadron of the United States Navy who also goes by the nickname the War Eagles as this particular patrol squadron's main operating base is located at the Naval Air Station Jacksonville which is located in uh, this is an actual military base is located in Jacksonville, Florida. All right, let's talk about the long radar antenna sensor that sits right above the APU, the auxiliary power unit exhaust right here. That long radar antenna sensor that sits above the APU, the auxiliary power unit exhaust, is actually called the MAD, Magnetic Anomaly Detector Synthetic Aperture Radar Antenna Sensor as this particular instrument sensor actually detects minute-by-minute minute variations in the Earth's magnetic field as well as to detect as well as to pinpoint any submerged enemy submarines from high altitudes. And then you see the electronic box that's installed underneath the APU which is this right there. It's actually called an AN-AAQ24 DIRCM Directional Infrared Countermeasure System which consists of a warning missile system, an integration unit, a processor, and laser turrets that tracks and detects energy towards the threat of the aircraft, as well as increased protection from common battlefield threats, as well as increased protection towards mission vulnerable type aircrafts and submarines. Now you're looking at this military aircraft from the rear view angle. Awesome. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the starboard side where you see the nose gears, uh, the black radon nose cone, the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, the 428, the number of the aircraft, the, um, the nose foreign area right here, 420 as I mentioned earlier, the, um, the front radon sensor right here, right there, the um, infrared uh, camera sensor right there, the Infrared camera system right there, right there, the infrared, um, the um, auxiliary fuel tank area right there, and there's another infrared camera system right there, sensor underneath the belly of the aircraft, as well as the front, uh, the AFT boat bin door, and there's the observing window right there. I got one more thing on the nose gear door, and let's talk about the honorary distinctive name that's displayed on the nose gear door on the starboard side, which is displayed is right here. The United States Navy decided to dedicate this particular PA Poseidon Maritime Patrol aircraft to Edward J. Clark, who actually served in the United States Navy during World War II, who served in the AWOI, American War of Independence Unit, which is located in Appomattox, Virginia as an NAC Naval Air Crewman slash AW Air Crewman who was awarded the Honorary Distinction of Sailor of the Year. However, information in regards to when Naval Air Crewman slash Air Crewman Edward J. Clark was awarded this Honorary Distinction of Sailor of the Year remains unknown as Edward J. Clark was born on January 20, 1925 and passed away on July 12, 2014 at the age of 89 years old. All right, we're sending the aircraft looking at the box-like antennas, the uh, auxiliary the uh, fuel tank area right here behind the AFT bolt bin door. You see the uh, General Electric, um, correction, 
these looking at the CFMI dash CFM 56 dash 7B 27A turbo type engines where you see there the engine cone as well as the uh, landing gears here on this side of the aircraft landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors now you're looking at these customized specialized wingtip devices on this aircraft featuring the green navigation light displayed on the edge of the specialized wingtip device now you're looking at the back of the aircraft where you see the uh, the U.S. Navy Rondell decal, the rear um, radon sensor, which is this right here, the weapons bay door area right there, the uh, sonar boy uh, shoots there, as well as the tail fin of the aircraft right here features the LF, the aircraft number, as well as the MRSAT antenna right there, which stands for International... Um, MRSAT stands for, forgot, hold on. All right, it stands for International Marine Slash Maritime Satellite Antenna, okay? Now you see the radon, the long radon sensor right there. Radar sensor right there. The, a, the APU exhaust right there. And then there's the, uh, the electronic box right there that sits underneath the, um, the APU exhaust system. Okay, before I show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this sophisticated military aircraft model, allow me to let you check out one feature, which is the rolling gears. Let's check them out. Rolls pretty good. It tilts, but unfortunately the nose gear on this aircraft does not swivel. So with that said, allow me to show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model. Let's check it out. Now you're looking at the aircraft model from the aerial bird's eye view. We're going to start at the um, front. You see the black nose radon cone, uh, the, the foreign area, the windshield wipers, the cockpit window. Now you see that little unit device that sits above the cockpit windows. This particular unit device is actually called a UARSSI, a Universal Aerial Refueling Resectable Slipway Insulation Unit. And this is where the fuel is actually received at. And the sole purpose of this refueling unit is that it ensures various receivers can receive fuel from boom equipment tankers. And then you see the high frequency antennas there, the box like antennas there, the anti collision beacon light, a couple more high frequency antennas, the tail, and then there's the horizontal stabilizer. And then you see the uh, wing walkway on the wings, the engines, as well as the flaps, slats, aileron spoils, what have you. The specialized wingtip device on this side of the aircraft. Then we come over this way. You see the engines there. And then you see the um, wing walkway as well as the flaps, slats, aileron spoils, what have you. You see the, uh, the United States Navy uh, decal as well as the specialized wingtip device on this side of the aircraft as well. All right, now you're looking at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft where you see the black radon nose cone. The, uh, the open nose gear door, including the nose gear, the infrared camera sensor, a couple more antennas there, uh, the Gemini Jets logo, the hole where the stand goes in at, the dual uh, anti collision beacon light, there's another uh, sensor there, uh, the weapons box area, the Sooner Boy uh, shoots area, tail skid, and then there's the little box right there, and then the horizontal stabilizers, and then we're coming over here. The gears, the engines, as well as the flaps, slaps, ailerons, and then you see the uh, Navy deal, the spoilers, and the specialized weight wing tip on this side of the aircraft. Come over here as well. The gears, the engines, as well as the flaps, slaps, ailerons, spoilers, what have you. The uh, United States Navy decal, as well as the customized wing tip device on this side of the aircraft as well. Okay, since I show you the area of bird's eye view of this military aircraft, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model, now I'm going to put it on that alternative model stand that, that I'm, uh, I said I'm going to put this on the model on the stand for. So here it is, everyone. Here is the model on the stand. Check it out. Okay, fine. Got this model on the stand with no problem, no hesitation. You see it displayed there. Now I'm going to let it rotate and let you check it in all directions. Let's check it out in all angles.
since this model has no gear replace doors, I'm going to go ahead and take this model off the stand and go ahead and wrap up this model review, okay? And finally, the United States Navy Boeing P-8 Poseidon Maritime Patrol Aircraft operates a crew of nine, which consists of two pilots and seven mission operators. And the, as the United States Navy's Boeing P-8 Poseidon Maritime Military Patrol aircraft can fly up to 10 hours uninterrupted at an operating cruise speed of 509 miles per hour and up to a maximum operating speed of 564 miles per hour. And the maximum operating range for the Boeing P-8 Poseidon Military aircraft is 4,500 nautical miles, which equates to about 5,200 miles, as this sophisticated military-type aircraft is used for anti-submarine warfare anti-surface warfare as well as used for shipping interdiction roles as well as used to perform search and rescue operating missions if and when necessary all right everyone this will conclude this model review i'd like to know if you got it are you planning on getting it if you can get it this model's become almost possible to find right now the only outside chance of getting it if you can get it is on ebay so with that said please take care god bless stay tuned there's more model content coming peace